Alright, are you guys ready for the final stretch of the temple? Head into this room and you will see that there are three pictures along the wall, but uh, there's a ghost in one of the pictures that keeps moving every time you get close. You want to shoot the ghost in each of the pictures from afar with the bow. And then, uh, once there's only one picture left, shoot it, and this will make the ghost come out and you have to fight it on its own. It will then move to the bottom part of the room, and you can defeat it by either using your sword, your bow, or the hookshot to pull it towards you. It fights just like all the regular pose that you find uh, in the graveyard, but this time it's colorful. In any case, the best way to defeat them is using a jump attack, in my opinion, because it does the most damage. So just try and use the blaze that as much as possible. So once you defeated Joelle, the first post sister, she will leave her red flame back into the torches. This will mean that you have one out of four torches lit. So go grab the arrows that she leaves behind to stock back up, and then open the small chest she leaves behind to get the small key. This is You shouldn't be, have two small keys in total at this point. If you don't have two, then you will not be able to go onward through the dungeon. So head on through the door, and then go to the opposite side of the room. There are some jars along the side, and some of them have uh, a red fairy inside, so if you are in need of health, you can collect that or put it in a bottle. Now you want to enter the door that has a symbol above it, and then this will take you onward into the next room. Inside, this is Beth's room. You have to fight her just like you did with Joelle, and you have to shoot her out of the picture frames. Once you defeated Beth, second post sister, she will leave behind more arrows for you to collect, and she will leave behind her flame. So now you have two flames out of four lit. So now that you have the blue flame, a large chest will appear that contains the compass. This will help us out a little bit to know where there's any chests left are, but it should be pretty simple at this point, because you pretty much needed to get all the small keys in order to even get to this point. So once you get to the top of the room, then you'll see that there's a locked door up here. Use one of our small keys to go through, and then inside you'll see there's another one of these weird hallways that comes, has different angles. So hop on down, and then you can kill the wallmaster if you so desire. I'm going to do so just to show you guys what, what they even do. So stand still and let the shadow get kind of big, and then just quickly run to the side. This will make it so the wallmaster will fall down, you lure him down, and then you can just kill him with two sword slashes. They leave behind a lot of rupees, but now rupees are kind of worthless at this point in the game anyway. But anyways, climb up the next ladder and go through the next hallway. This one is straight, and there are a new enemy in here called Green Bubbles. These guys work just like the Blue Bubbles, except that they can their flames turn on and off, so you can actually wait for their flames to stop, and then you can attack them. They also don't come after you, they just tend to just patrol in one specific area, and then just stay there. So they're pretty easy to defeat, um, and in this case you can just avoid them entirely by walking past them. Once you get in this room, there's a frozen ice switch that we need to melt and then hit the ice switch. Uh, you can use either Din's Fire to melt it, or you can use an arrow through the flame in the middle of the room. So you stand on one of the spinning platforms and shoot an arrow through the flame in order to melt it. This is kind of tricky, and they're kind of trying to hint at this, but it's not really very obvious because they have no other clues, other than the fact that there is a spinning platform around it. This will twist the hallway that you just came through. This allows you to get to that little room at a different angle. Head back through the hallway, which is now twisted, and just avoid the green bubbles altogether. Once you get back to this room, I suggest you just avoid the wallmaster altogether and just fall down the hole. This will take us to a checkerboard room, which we have not yet been to. Head through this uh, hallway real quick, and I want to show you something. Outside here, this will take us back to the room where we went down the well. But there is this upper ledge that I pointed out earlier that had a scarecrow on it. Now that we're up high, we can actually 
uh, call the Scarecrow. This will give us a shortcut so we can get to this back to this room quickly if you need to. I don't really see why you would unless you plan on dying anytime soon, but now we have a shortcut. So head back into the previous room, and now we're going to finally tackle the checkerboard floor. So as you get close, Navi will scream at you to tell you that the, the ceiling is falling. Kind of intimidating, no? Anyways, you want to make sure that you know where all the holes are in the ceiling, so that when you are running around underneath that you can go towards them. Any place where there's a chest or a switch or anything, that's obviously going to be um, a free spot where you can lay. If the floor falls down at you, it'll restart the room and you have to do it all over again. Also, wherever the enemies are, you can kill them and then take their spot uh, so that you can be there. You also know where all the enemies are by where their shadows are. So once you finally manage to get over to the other side of the room, go through the door, and inside you'll see some shadows on the floor. This is because there are blocks that are hanging from the ceiling. And then, so what you want to do is stand where there are not shadows, and then shoot the portrait against the wall with the, the fairy bow. So once you shoot the eye switch, then these blocks will fall from the ceiling, and you have to move the first block that does not belong out of the way. The next blocks you have to pull all together to form a picture. Now the problem with this puzzle is that you have a time limit. If you run out of time, the blocks will rise up into the air and flip and move on to a different angle. The problem is that each side is a little bit different. The ones that are on the picture that is on the bottom right is now going to be on the top left, etc. So they're going to be totally mixed up, and then you'll have a harder time completing the puzzle. I suggest that you just exit and re-enter the room to reset the puzzle, because the first puzzle is the easiest in my opinion. So if you mess up, just re-enter the room. Once you've defeated Amy, the third co-sister, she will leave behind her flame, so you have three out of fl four flames lit. This will also open up the door that leads back to the main room. So climb up on top of the platform, and then slash the jars if you like to get more arrows and hearts, in case you ran out um, of some of those. So go through the door, and inside there is a big spatula, so you can either shoot it down with either your hookshot or the fairy bow. Head on back through to the main room. So once you get back to the main room, you'll find Meg, the final post sister, snickering in the middle. Go towards her and she will commence a battle in which she has three illusions of herself. The first one will spin around, so that one on the right just spin, spun around, that's the real one. But anyways, she has three illusions that will surround you, and if you manage to use the process of elimination to kill all the ones except for her, or if you take too long, she will come towards you and attack you. Like I said, every time she appears, and right before she attacks, she spins around. This is how you know which one is the real one. So watch them appear, you'll see the real one spin around again. So that one over there is the real one. So please shoot it down, and wait. In this process, you can attack her this way, and eventually kill her off. So once you've defeated Meg, the final Poe sister, she will leave behind her flame, so now you have four out of four flames lit. This will make the elevator rise out of the floor, and we can finally make our way to the last section of the temple. Now, before we head down there, if you need any arrows or hearts, then I suggest you slash the jars within this room to restock. This is our last chance to do so before the boss, so you will, will want to do it now. So hop on down, and this room is quite odd. There are uh, all these hallways that you can't quite get into, so you're going to have to push the wall in order to move it. Uh, so you can make, go to new areas of the room. You want to push it counterclockwise, and this will open up the first area, which is a tan corridor which has a switch in it. Step on the switch, and then push the, the wall counterclockwise again. This opens up the red corridor, which has a switch in it. So go step on the switch, and then you want to push the wall counterclockwise yet again. This will open up the tan corridors again. 
now that the one side doesn't have a, a wall in front of it, we can hit it here. There is a big Scatula, as well as a gold Scatula in, in here. Kill it to collect token number 53. Then you can open the small chest to get a bundle of arrows. At this point, we want to move the uh, wall counterclockwise one more time. This will open up the two blue corridors. One of them has a wall in front of it, so go to the other and step on the switch. This will open up the wall that's in the blocking the other way to the other one. So head across the room and go inside, and you will find the boss door. This is our last chance to get stuff, so if you need arrows or hearts, then go get them now. Thank you for joining me, and in the next video, I will show you how to defeat the boss of the Forest Temple.